fears. Come on, lift your voice. The Spirit of the Lord is here. just to encourage you in the area of your giving and in your faith, because I want you to see just how big and how powerful God is, right? Today is significant for our church across both locations, both at Lone Hill and Clearwater. Pastor Nick is on the highway. He'll be here shortly to share a powerful vision with our church, but I I want you to know that everything has a beginning. Am I right? Everything has a beginning, and so I was just thinking as I was preparing for today about our beginning and about how powerful God moved in our lives so that we could all sit here today. You know, when Vista first started, uh, not even two years ago, it was Mother's Day 2020. <laughs> Pastor Nick and I, we, we, we didn't even have our own cell phone at that point. We'd gone through a bit of a season and, and God had provided a phone for us and then um, we said we're gonna start a church out of obedience for a word that came from the Lord on our hearts. But we looked at ourselves and we said, but with what, God? We have nothing in our hands, absolutely nothing, except (laughs) one cell phone. And how many of you know that Vista Church started with a cell phone online? We had to start our church in that day, which sounds like years ago, it wasn't too long ago, you couldn't even buy a magazine because COVID was so strict with the regulations, amen, and God put a cell phone in our hands and said, go online, do it that way, do what you have to do to plant this church because I need this church on the West Rand. And I want you to know that God is so powerful that he can speak anything into existence. And when it comes to our own personal journey, our own lives and our own finances and trusting God, we've got to trust God with what is in our hands. You don't know the size of your seed until you've sown it and you see what it produces, amen? 
We're sitting here today because God wanted us here today, but it took obedience to say, I'm gonna take what I have. I'm gonna sow what I have, my time, my finance, my effort, my energy, whatever is in my hands, I'm gonna sow it unto you, God, so that your name can be glorified. And how many of you know that when you do that, God just wants to shine on you. He just wants to pour out his blessings. Look at our beautiful family. We've got a beautiful family. Not only that, but then God extended our family to the other side of the city. And we have two families. That is one family in two locations. We're just giving our city a big hug from both sides. Amen. And so I want you to know that only God can speak things into existence. And so when you trust them with the things that are weighing you down, and so often it's even our finances, how many of you know that he will speak things into existence for you? And so I wanna remind you about the beginning of all time because that'll help you remember how powerful God is. In Genesis chapter one and verse one, we start to realize about how powerful our God is when he decided I'm gonna take what is nothing and I'm gonna make it something so special to me, and so what he does is on the first day, he made day and night, amen? And then he made the sky and separated the water, sky and water on day two. How many of you know on day three, he, he made every plant that ever existed and he caused it to have seed so that it could continue to reproduce for all of existence. The third day in, God was already providing for you. The third day that this world ever existed, God had already planted every possible tree and plant and shrub that you would ever need so that you had everything you would ever need to live the life that he had planned for you. He even considered the animals, they came after that. <laughs> the next day they came because God wanted to make sure that every step of the way, every single detail was ironed out and was ready for you and for me. And when we start to think of that, then this beautiful scripture comes alive. Philippians 4 verse 19 says, and my God will supply every need of yours according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. He supplies according to his riches, not your riches, your boss's riches, or the riches of the world. He supplies your every need according to his glory and his riches. That means that he is infinitely wealthy, and that means that he will never lack the ability to provide for you immeasurably, abundantly, in ways you could ever hope for or imagine, because that is how big and how powerful our God is. Isn't that awesome? And so the next time you find yourself wondering, God, I don't know how I'm going to do it. I, I feel like the widow with just a tiny mite. I don't know how I'm going to sow because this is all I have in my hand. I want you to remember the author and the finisher of our life and of our faith who came and made it possible long before you were even made. <laughs> long before you were even a concept in your parents' minds, long before you were even a seed in your mom's heart and in her womb, God had already provided for you. And so he is almighty God. And when you honor him with your seed, with your tithe, with your finance and with your time, you need to know that he means business with you according to his riches in glory. And so it's not always gonna look like you think it's gonna look, but it's always gonna be exactly what you need and it's gonna exceed your every expectation. Amen, come on. Hey, awesome family, and welcome to church. Whether you're joining us online or at our in-person experiences, you made a great call, and we are so super glad that you've decided to join us this weekend. Yes, that's right. Church, I'm so excited to tell you about something super cool that is happening. On the 27th of March, we have our baby dedication. Now, for those of you who do not know, this is an opportunity for parents and families to come together to dedicate their little ones to the Lord. It is such an amazing and significant time um, of just joy, celebration, and just overall excitement. Mm -hmm. So I wanna encourage you, bring everybody as we dedicate these little ones to the Lord. Wow, that's so super special. 
Church, we would also like to let you know about our financial freedom course. Now this course commences on the 1st of March and will be held online every Tuesday. The cost is only 250 Rand and you'll get three amazing resources to help you throughout this course. And if you would like to purchase these books, they are available at our Welcome Center. All right, that's right, Church. And I'm so excited to tell you about our awesome Joseph Project initiative. This is an initiative where we basically um, get together and we contribute 250 Rand and your donation um, helps feed a family of four for an entire month. Yep. So we really want to ask you to briefly consider making a donation. But remember when you do to reference Joseph Project so we can allocate your funds accordingly. It's such an amazing initiative to be a part of. Now church, we hope you guys are as excited as we are to get into today's word. So grab your pens, grab your notebooks, and grab your Bibles as we get ready to have another powerful message from God. And have a super Sunday, everyone. Get ready, because we're coming in higher. Touching heaven, changing earth. Well, this weekend is Vision Weekend, and I'm really excited to share with you the vision that God has laid on my heart for both uh, City Life at uh, Lone Hill as well as this location. And as I begin to share it straight away, you may be saying some of this Pastor Nick mentioned last week and some of it. The reality is, is that I've been downloading what I believe God has been saying for a little while now. So extend grace to me on parts that maybe are a repeat. For some of you, this is all brand new. That's amazing. One of two things, you haven't been here or you're not listening. You're sleeping in church. I don't know what, but it's all good. Um, but I really believe there is a specific word for us as a church at the start of 2022. And really, it's not just for 2022. I believe it's for the season that lies ahead. As I mentioned last week, we've come out of two years of a very specific shaking season. It's been a season that's been very uncomfortable. And for a lot of us, we've come out and it feels like we have lost a lot during this past season. But I really believe God was saying that He has shaken away the chaff and what is left are the things that are significant. You stand this side of a pandemic and you have your health, you have your marriage, you have your family, right? You have your faith. Listen, God doesn't work with the structures we build. He works with the gifts and the development of what He's placed inside of you. And even at a time like this, that it can feel like what we have is so small, let me help you. What you have is like gold nuggets that you have in your hand, and God will do, do something phenomenal with them. Out of very small that's founded in Him, God can do much. That's why God says, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, right? Little mustard seed, God can do much with it. Can I get an amen this morning? Come on. And so this season is really a season of new beginnings. And as I shared last week, that it's a season of vision. But I know for many people that have spoken to me, they've struggled to receive vision from the Lord because also it's a season of establishing and rebuilding your identity. When we read the New Testament, we find in the book of Acts chapter 9 that as Saul was walking on the road to Damascus, Saul had a religious foundation. He understand the law, he understood the law of the Old Testament. He understood his revelation of God based on who God was, but he had an encounter on the road to Damascus where Jesus appeared to him and he was blinded in that moment. I want you to notice something. That are on a road of Damascus. Demascus, Demascus, God, that on this season and in this season, you would remove the mask and you would reveal the identity of who we are in Christ Jesus. It is a season of demasking that we will encounter the glory of the Lord and from a place of establishing, as was with Saul, who he was, not in Old Testament revelation and doctrine, but in the establishment of who 
who he was in Christ that he received a download of a vision that didn't just change his world, but for centuries, long after Paul was on this planet, we are still being changed by the Word of God released through the man who wrote two-thirds of the New Testament. But it comes from a place of us removing the mask of working with what is left out of the pandemic and allowing God to do a good work, knowing this, that He who began a good work in you is faithful to complete it. Bump your neighbor, tell them God's going to complete it. God is going to finish the vision that He has for your life. And so Vision Sunday, there was way too much for me to do it in one part. And so Vision Sunday is the next three Sundays. If you're here today, get comfortable in that seat. Tell your seat, I will see you the next couple of weeks as well. We want you to be here the next three Sundays because this is a significant time for who we are in Christ as a church and what God is going to release us into in the season ahead. You know, on June the 20th in 2021, we made an announcement that two churches were becoming one. It's amazing that for Pastor Bianca and I, and at the start of COVID, starting Vista Church, we would have never thought what God was doing or what He was up to. We received a prophetic word from a very well-known prophet in New Zealand who said, what took the children of Israel 40 years will take you four days. In other words, God will fast forward what He wants to do because what the enemy has taken from you, God will return to you 100-fold in the name of Jesus. Come on. And God is establishing something. And so right now today, in 2022, we sit with two growing churches. And right now we have the ability, both in Lone Hill and here in Clearwater, to reach out and be the arms and together two as one, give our city a hug and give our city reveal the love of Christ. Why? Because the Word of God says two is better than one. If you're worried that we've got another church and our focus has changed, our focus hasn't changed. Why? Because God says two is better than one. We can accomplish far more as two churches than we could do just with one. Two is better than one. Why? Because a cord of three strands cannot easily be broken. Why? Because Christ is our third strand. We're established in who Christ is. We're established on the Word of God. And so today on this house, in this house, here at Clearwater, I believe that God will bring incredible clarity for you and your family as you sit and position yourself under the Word of God. In a year and a season where everything has been thrown up, where you're looking at a lake and it feels all murky and dirty, that in the settling time, this is a settling season, you will see clearly you will see and establish what God is doing, not just in this church, but in what He's doing for you and your family. You know, in April 2020, Pastor Bianca and I launched this church, Vista Church, at the beginning of a pandemic. And it was like, God, I wouldn't have done that, right? God, who launches a church at the beginning of a pandemic? No one, right? But it's in Isaiah 55 verse 8, God says, my ways are higher and my thoughts are higher. In other words, God will do things that are rather unorthodox, that you wouldn't probably do. How do you know when it's God speaking? Because it's probably the path that you wouldn't choose. You see, when God develops something in you, He uses something called resistance. How many of us hate those times, right? How many of you know when you go to gym, you cannot just do the easy weights. Why? Because you'll never build anything. You'll never build muscles because there is not enough resistance. When God wants to develop anything, He places you in a place of resistance. If right now you're feeling like, flip, there's a lot happening. There's a lot of resistance. God has trusted the faith you have in your life that you will get through this season. But I've got good news for you. How many of you, when you're writing, you remember writing an exam at school and you'd come into the, the, the school hall and, you know, your mom or, or a teacher was so amazed by how hard you'd worked and how much studying you'd done. Some of us more than others, come on. 
and you'd walk just before you walked in or when you left home, your mom or a teacher would say, I'll see you on the other side. And you'd walk in and you'd be all alone writing that test. Well, you see, when God tests you, it's not the same as that. God is not the God of, I'll see you on the other side. He's the God who says, I will be with you until the other side. He's with you in the middle of the resistance. He's with you in the middle of the training. But I've got good news. He's with you all the way until your breakthrough comes in the name of Jesus. And this is a year I want to tell you of incredible breakthrough for the church of Jesus Christ. And so in a few short months after launching Vista Church, we saw our Facebook page social media reaching over 120,000 people. We had close on 900 Facebook followers at the time, 500 YouTube experience views in the past few weeks at the time. But I want to tell you, God has a plan for this church and it's exciting. And today on Vision Sunday, I want to say, I don't just want a good vision. So many people just put out a good vision that, you know, this is not Vision Sunday, S-U-N-D-A-E. It's not the dessert you have at Milky Lane after the experience. It's not eating a dessert and thinking, wow, it's just warm and fuzzy. No, this is Vision Sunday, right? I don't want just a good vision for the year. I want a God vision for what God's going to do through this house, through this year. And so I've got good news for you. Come on. It's the 22nd year of the third millennium. Come on. Sounds all very deep and theological that right I love saying that because it's like everyone's like gear shift in your head 22nd year third millennium right fantastic but I want to release to you an anchor verse that I believe is significant and that verse is found in the book of Joshua Joshua chapter 3 verse 5 then Joshua addressed the people and he said sanctify yourselves tomorrow God will work miracle wonders amongst you. Father, today, I thank you, God, that in a season that's felt so dry spiritually, yet physically there's an abundance of rain, that, Lord, the rain will be a prelude to what you're about to release here on the earth for the children of God. Father, we're trusting you in this season, Lord, for the amazing things, the miraculous things, a move of God so significant, it tilts and shifts thousands into your house, Lord, that thousands will come to know the Lord Jesus, not just in their head, but in their heart, that lives will be transformed in our city, that our country will not be known as a country of crime and corruption, but a city of encounter and the presence of God, where people will become children of God, where they will live their lives to the full, where they will experience an abundance of the provisions of God, the healing of heaven, where families will be established and nations discipled to become more like your son, Jesus Christ. And so today, Lord, that is our prayer. That is our heart. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Come on. Can we give it up for our worship team and everywhere? We have such amazing worship and production team who are here so early. We love you guys. Thank you for preparing everything and getting everything on the ball for today. We really appreciate it. And so Joshua, I want you to see something here. Joshua, his name means salvation. That's significant. I'm going to open up a tap and it's going to feel like I've opened up a fire hydrant just for a short while. Don't switch off. Bump your neighbor, tell them don't switch off for a moment because there's significance in what I'm about to say. So Joshua, whose name is salvation, says, sanctify yourselves for tomorrow the Lord will do amazing things. That word sanctify comes from the Hebrew word, which is kodash, which means to be set apart. In the Old Testament, they would have to fulfill a whole number of religious obligations in order to feel, fulfill the law of the Old Testament to have some resemblance of what they perceived was holiness. But because of the work of the cross, because of our salvation, there are three processes. The first is justification. In other words, when we receive Christ as our Lord, it was just as if we had never sinned, justification. And we know that on the day when Christ returns or we we leave this earth and stand before the Father, there is the third process called glorification. 
Glorification, the Bible says that outwardly we are passing away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. In other words, this tent, this flesh, the one that you try and disguise the wrinkles and the gray hairs and everything else, right, is passing away. But on the day of glorification, the Bible says he will give us a heavenly body, right? So we understand salvation where we are justified in Christ just as if we hadn't sinned, and glorification when that day when we come before the Father and we receive a glorified body. But Joshua is saying that there is a process in the middle of sanctification. In other words, that we as the people of God would be set apart. In other words, be different than people who have not received salvation. And I want to say to you that as that as that passage goes, we need to realize that the message of grace is intrinsically threaded and woven through every single thing that we do as a church. And I'm so grateful that the message of grace has come through so strongly in the past five years. We've heard that we are saved by grace and not by works, lest any person should boast. There is salvation here. If we make a mistake, if we mess up, if we fall into sin, there is this beautiful cushioning called grace. But I want you to see something. Joshua, the place of salvation, speaks of a process that we are to undergo this side of eternity. In other words, sitting encamped at a place called salvation is not gonna get us to where God wants us to be in this season. God's asking for a people that are holy. Christ has made us holy. We're not holy by ourselves. It's Christ in us, the hope of glory. But through the revelation of who Christ is, we begin the process of becoming more like the image of his son. And what happens if we stay in the place only of grace and don't move into who God has called us to be? We become very lethargic. We can become stagnant. And often we find ourselves coming to church out of obligation, out of a tick box, remembering past experiences of encounters we had before. But let me help you. God is the God of a new day. It is a new dawn. It is a new beginning. God doesn't want you focusing on who you were. It's a brand new season. If there is breath in your lungs, there is life within you and your greatest days will still lie ahead of you in Jesus name. And so for 2022, I believe the word of the Lord would come to us and God has declared it to be a standout year. There are three parts to this, thus three weeks. The first is stand up. The second is stand out. And the third is stand strong. And so as part one, as we launch that today, I want to ask you, can we be a stand up kind of people. You see, a standout year comes when we stand up. Can the real believers of God please stand up? Please stand up. Come on. Come on. Yeah. I wasn't expecting you to stand up, but you're awesome. Come on. You see, a stand-up year is a call to ascent. A stand-up year is a call to come up higher. You see, a supernatural encounter always takes place at a higher altitude. What many of us don't realize is that when God first introduces himself to Abraham, he comes to him and says, I am God Almighty. Walk before me and be blameless. The word God Almighty is a Hebrew word called El Shaddai. In other words, El Shaddai, the Lord Almighty, but actually when you study Hebrew, that word El Shaddai is the God of the mountain. He's not the God of mountains. In other words, who may ascend the hill of the Lord? That's where the idea of El Shaddai, he is high and lifted up. He is elevated. He's in a high place. Who may ascend the hill of the Lord? I look to the hills, where does my help come from? It's a place of spiritual ascent that God would say to us today in Matthew 5, 14, that you are the light of the world, a city on a hill that should not be hidden. You see, the, the call in 2022 is for a people of faith that they would stand up, rise up. You'll hear a lot of who we are as a church. Why? Because God hasn't changed his mind with what he's doing in this house. In Revelation 4 verse 1, 
that uh, John is on the island of Patmos and he says, and after this, I looked up and I saw an open door. He's the God of the open door. Some of you have felt blockages. You've felt barriers. Well, it's time to come up higher. It's time to stand up. It's time to move from a place of being seated to change your posture, not just physically, but mentally to ascend. And John says, I saw before me an open door and the voice who spoke to me said, uh, come up here and I will show you what is to come. For us to encounter God, for us to have vision for this season ahead, we have to ascend. We have to come up higher. In Ephesians 2 verse 6, it says, And God has raised us up with Christ and seated us in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. I love the story of that guy who was in World War II flying a, a bomber, and he began to hear the gnawing in the front of the cockpit of cables and realized that when he had filled up his last fuel, that a rat had gotten on board that little bomber plane and was begun to gnaw on the cables and the tubes at the front of the plane. He had a decision to make. Does he descend and not fulfill the time of the mission that he had to do? In other words, if he descended, he'd miss the opportunity. And so in that moment, he realized and had a revelation that that rat couldn't survive at a higher altitude. And so he began to pull back on that gear shift. He began to pull back on that plane. He had a supply of oxygen. And he ascended until the sound of the gnawing stops. Some of you in the season have had the sound of people gnawing on what God has called you to do. It's time to come up higher. This is not just a clever slogan. It's who we are as a church. We are a stand-up people. We're a people that's not sitting down when we see injustice, when we see people doing corruption and crime. We are a stand-up people. Why? Because when we stand up, we take our heavenly posture and God shows up on the scene. Come on. And so as he ascended, the sound stopped. As he eventually fulfilled his mission, they found that dead rat. But it started from a high place. You see, to stand up is a state of being. In Nehemiah chapter 6, verse 3, I love it. Nehemiah is doing the work of the Lord. And he says, I am doing a great work and I will not come down to you. In other words, I'm not coming down to the distraction. And so throughout scripture, El Shaddai, the God of the single mountain, we live in a city with many mountains that man has made. The God of materialism, the God of self, all these gods that perpetuate across our city, but God would say he is the God of the one mountain, that over our city there is the hill of the Lord. There is a place of encounter, a place of refreshment, a place of rejuvenation, a place where we encounter revival in our hearts that when we encounter our city, we have something to give them and something to offer them. Throughout scripture, we read of Noah, who in obedience to the word sanctified himself. In other words, he set himself apart on an ark. And when the ark came to rest, the Bible says that it came to rest on a mountain. And from that place of a mountain, life began again. Your life can begin again from a place of encounter with God. And as we read through scripture, Abraham was called to take his one and only son, the son of the promise, and to take Isaac up a hill and offer him as a sacrifice. I want to tell you that when you stand up, there are sacrifices that you will have to make. There are some decisions you will have to make. God can't have you one foot in and one foot out. He can't have you one doing the things of the world and one coming to church just on a Sunday. God's asking, will you be a holy people? In other words, will you be a people set apart? And as Abraham walked up on that mountain, the Lord provided a substitute. The Lord provided a ram. I love that. And then we read of Moses who had an encounter with God on a mountain at a burning bush. He went up a mountain to encounter the presence of God. He was so enamored by the presence of God, he had to wear a veil when he descended to the people. Why? Because there is a holy glow about you when you've encountered the presence of God. 
When he asked to see the face of God, it was through the cleft in the rock that he saw a glimpse of the Lord passing by. It's at a high place that we learn to know the character and nature of who our God is. It was Elijah who defeated the prophets of Baal in a mountain. And in that same place, he cried out to God from a desert place, from a wilderness place, from a place that had a severe drought. And he said, Lord, would you send rain? And for seven times, he cried out on top of a mountain until he saw a cloud as small as a man's fist. And he knew that God was at work. In this time, in this season where we have had lots of rain in the physical, can we be the holy people in our place of work, in our place of employment, in our family and in our marriage that cry out day and night, God, would you send revival? Would you do something in my place of work? Come on. That God would send the rain. Come on. We read in Scripture how Jesus was born of a virgin came down to earth, his very first sermon was the sermon on the mount. That people would ascend to hear the word of the Lord. It took effort. It took, took an approach. Why? Because when we draw near to God, he will draw near to us. There's a principle there. And he gave the people in Matthew 6 some of the greatest revelation. But it came from a place of ascent. Will you stand up? Will you change your posture? Will you move and motion to what God has for you in this season? And Jesus continued to minister for another three years until one of the days of significance on this planet, the day of significance, where Jesus gave his life, paid a debt that you and I could never pay on the cross in a place called Golgotha, the hill of the skull. Every significant encounter, when Jesus was seen in his glory, it was called the Mount of Transfiguration. It was in a place of glory. When a few chapters later, after Jesus had ascended, he had promised us in John 14 and 16, I will send you another. I will send you a comforter, a counselor. We are a church of the Holy Spirit. We're a church that knows the full power and impact of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Come on. We're a Spirit-filled church. We're a church that's moved by the Spirit. We walk in the Spirit. We're led by the Spirit. We develop fruit of the Spirit. We operate in gifts of the Spirit in Jesus' name. And so that day of Pentecost, they were all in one place, in one accord. Where? In an upper room, in an upper place, in a high place. God is asking, would you stand up, church? And there came a sound of a rushing rain, a sound of many waters. And there on that place, the Holy Spirit filled every single one of them. Church, God is asking us. All these people had an encounter with God. Every single person in the Old Testament encountered and accessed the promise of God by changing their position and their posture. God hasn't changed the vision he has for this church. We're a church that comes up higher. We're a church that stands up. We're a church that ascends the hill of the Lord. We're a church that from a place of encounter Everything else gets perspective. Why? Because in the light of his glory, all the things of the earth become shadows in the light of who he is. Your big problem, right? Your big enemy. Listen, some of us say, hey, as a believer, we shouldn't have enemies. Then why did Jesus say, bless your enemies? (laughs) He said, you will have enemies, right? Don't be oblivious to who your enemy is, right? Enemy isn't people. The devil uses people, right? Make sure you understand that the person isn't your enemy. It's the spirit behind the person. But God doesn't say rebuke them. God doesn't say shout at them. God says bless your enemies, right? Jesus said bless your enemies. In other words, you will have enemies. But when you come up higher, when you stand up, the things of the earth aren't that important. Your problems are way smaller. Your enemies get perspective. The things that have been bugging and troubling you in the night hours that have been keeping you awake through the night are not that relevant when you come to a place of encounter. When we stand up, we find a place of perspective. And so church, today as we speak of our vision for the year ahead, God hasn't asked us to be a lofty church. He hasn't asked us to be a super spiritual church that when the world comes in, we ignore them because all we're doing is chasing after another encounter with God. 
That when we go into our work, we're singing holy, holy past every employee, and they think we're the weirdest person in the whole planet, right? God's not asking for those people. He's saying, when you come from a place of encounter, be relevant. Go back to the valley. Go back to the city. Go back and encounter people. But do it from a posture and a position of having stood up. And suddenly we put everything in perspective when we stand up. We will return to the valley, come on, to the detail, to the city. I want to tell you that this church is not just a church that has a Sunday service. I wanted to say that we are a church that has an experience, but we don't just have an experience because God, God has not called us to be part of a grandstand. He hasn't called us to look at it dis from a distance and say, what a wonderful experience. Well done, Christians. You did so well. It was so beautiful. You sang in all the right octaves. The harmonies were perfect. God hasn't called us to be observers. God hasn't called us to a Sunday service, a Sunday experience, but he's called us to a Sunday encounter. From this moment forward, we have an encounter in this place. Why? Because God wants to meet with every single person that comes in this place. No matter how far they are from God or how close they are to Him, this will be a house of encounter. As Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 4, I did not come to you with wise and persuasive words. You know what our world has way too much of is wise and persuasive words. We've had people come to our church and say, wow, that was so applicable to me, and they never, ever encountered who God was. Sometimes we come with wise sayings and wise things, and we want to be practical. We want to help the people of God, but as Paul said, I don't want to just help people. I want them to encounter God, because when we encounter God, that changes any, everything. Words only have so much power, but I want to tell you an encounter can change every single thing. And so for our church, our church vision across both locations will stay the same, touching heaven, changing earth. That's who we are as a people. God is the God of Abram, Isaac, and Jacob. And Jacob woke up in a place called Bethel, and he said he saw angels ascending and descending, and sure, said, surely this is the house of God, the very place of an encounter with God. We're a church that believes when we're impacted by heaven, we have the ability to change earth. We're not just delving into heaven of no earthly good because God hasn't called us to do that. God has given us a great commission to encounter heaven, but from a place of encounter, we begin to change the world in which God has placed us. We still have a mandate, church. God hasn't changed the salvation message. I don't want to get to heaven one day thinking, you know what, maybe we didn't have to receive Christ. Maybe it's, maybe it's some other weird gospel or things like that. And slowly the devil is trickling in with all these false messages. Oh, you know, we all go to heaven. Just be a good person. Get, live. No. Then what was the point of Jesus Christ? What was the point of what Paul wrote? What was the point of all God did on this planet if it didn't rest on the pivotal decision of inviting Jesus into your heart and making a decision? to follow Christ. Come on. There is a hell to shun and a heaven to gain. And this year it's time for the church to stand up and call it for what it is. Come on. My brother, my sister, do you know Jesus? Not out of fear, not out of judgment, not out of condemnation, but because we want the best for them. Your best life is when you, when you encounter who Christ is. Come on. And so today I want us to stand in this moment and I'm going to ask our worship team to come up. And it's important in this moment that we're standing. Why? Because from when we stand, we understand the authority that we have. Today, church, we understand how God has positioned us. We understand that we are ambassadors. We understand that we're seated with Christ in the heavenly realms. That from a place of encounter, our lives can be changed. And I believe today as we stand here and as today I unpack more around identity, but in the weeks ahead, as we get and delve more into our vision of what it means to stand out, what it means to stand strong in the next two Sundays, I want to say to us today, church, that from today, God has given this church a new name. This church shall be City Life Clear Water. Come on. That's who we are. We cannot hug our city from two different places if we're not on the same page. But listen, who we are, our ethos, what we carry, 
the vision that God has instilled in our people, nothing has shifted. He is the God of the mountain. When we ascend the hill, we encounter His presence. We will come up higher. We're touching heaven, changing earth, everything that we are. But I just love God because as I was going through all of this, you know, I was praying in the Drakensberg, and it's this beautiful mountain in the wilderness. And it was in those places that God gave us the vision for Vista Church. He gave us the vision for the way forward. And a few weeks ago, I had to go to Cape Town. Wasn't planned, wasn't strategic, nothing. I just said, well, while I'm down there, I'm gonna go up Table Mountain, I'm gonna pray. And on a mountain above a city, God gave me a revelation and a vision for these two churches coming together. We are called to the quiet place. We are called to intimacy with Christ, but it's always in regard for the city, the people, the lives down here that we're called to touch. We're touching heaven, but yet we're changing earth. Can I get an amen today? Come on. And so today I wanna to ask you as you stand in this place, can I ask you to bow your heads, close your eyes. I want you to be conscious of the fact that you're on your feet. If you can stand in this place, please be standing. As you stand on two feet today in this building, I want you to be aware that there's a different flow of air up here. <laughs> there's a different place of encounter. That as you're standing today, God would say, do not go back to what I've delivered you from. Do not go back to Egypt. Joshua, the person of salvation, his name means salvation took the people on the process of sanctification that they would cross the river Jordan and enter the place of the promise where God did amazing things. So God would say the same to us today. We're not hanging around just in where we made the decision to receive Christ. We're gonna live for Him. We're gonna stand up. We're gonna stand out and we're gonna stand strong. I'm believing for a people today that would say today, God, I want you more than my past. God, I'm not holding on to the nostalgia of past moments and encounters. I'm standing tall. I'm standing firm. I'm going to stand out because that's what you've called me to be. And so, Father, today over every single person here, I thank you for your blessing. I thank you for your presence. But, Father, today we want to thank you for our mandate. If you came here today feeling you didn't have purpose, this message had purpose written all over it. That company you work for is gonna be transformed this year. That family that has been on shaky ground for a long time is gonna be transformed by the power of God this year. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for what you're doing in this house. Right now, I wanna ask you, where are you at in your relationship with God? If today you are honest with yourself and you said, Pastor Nick, I'm far from God, I want to give you an opportunity to pray and receive the Lord as your Savior. The place of salvation will propel you into the destiny God designed you for. He formed you in your mother's womb. He knitted you together. He knows your, your gifts, your talents, your quirkiness. He knows everything about you and He loves you anyway. Your true self, your true identity is found when you're in relationship with if today you'd like to invite Christ into your heart, begin that journey. With every eye closed and every head bowed, I want you to slip your hand up today so I can include you in my prayer. If today you're far from God, I want you to lift your hand up. Thank you, thank you, thank you. If you lifted your hand in this place, I want you to say this prayer with all of us today. Say this, say, Lord Jesus, I come before you today and I ask you, Lord, to come into my life. I choose you, Jesus, as my Lord, and as my Savior, forgive me of my sin, forgive me of my past mistakes, and make me new, in Jesus' name, amen. Can we give those people a round of applause today? Fantastic. I want to encourage you to check out our website. There's also a QR code. I'm sure it'll be on the screen shortly. If you snap that, it'll help you on your journey with Jesus. Church, before we go, before we leave, I want to share this one more thing with you. Listen, as one church across two parts of our city, under the name City Life Church, I'm very excited to let you know that we officially have a brand new logo, which is gonna be for both houses, both at Clearwater and Lone Hill.
and I'd love you to see it because I want to tell you I dressed up smart today. Come on. Not, 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 because, not because I'm trying to be snooty or trying to say I'm classy or anything like that, but to stand out, right? Come on. Come on, say it. But to stand out, right? I want to tell you when you see our new logo, it stands out. You're going to wear that and people are going to go, Flip, what, are you, what is that? I want to be part of that, right? It's a tool. It's not, it's not like our identity is in Christ, not in a logo. But it's a tool. It's a net to bring people into the kingdom of God. Oh, this is our church. My life transformed because of City Life Church. Why don't you come along, right? And so I'm not giving it to you today. <laughs> I want you to come next week and week three. I want you to see it. I want you to be part of it. God bless you. Have an incredible Sunday. And we'll see you again next weekend. you up to? It's Vista Bear! Yay! Hey, Vista Bear! We're checking out the lions. Look at their big, scary teeth. <laughs> that sounds like so much fun. Did you know there was a wise man called Hello. Daniel who loved God and prayed three times a day? The truth shall set you free! The king liked Daniel and made him the leader over his advisors. But the advisors didn't like Daniel, so they made an evil plan to get rid of him. They knew Daniel served God, so they convinced the king to make a new law so people could only pray to the king himself. If they prayed to other gods, they would be thrown into the lion's den and eaten. Daniel loved God and continued praying to him three times a day. When the men saw Daniel praying, they told the king. Oh, no! The king was sad <laughs> because he liked Daniel. Then he knew he could not change the law. So he had Daniel thrown into the lion's den. Uh-oh! The lions were big, scary, and had sharp teeth. But Daniel's faith was strong. He believed God would save him. So he wasn't afraid. Wow! That was so brave! God sent an angel to be with Daniel and keep the lion's mouth shut all night. That's amazing! The next morning, the king came to see if Daniel was alive. Hello! He called for Daniel. Hello! And Daniel answered and said, My God sent his angel and he shut the lion's mouths. They have not hurt me because I was found innocent in his sight. Oh, wow! The king ordered his guards to get Daniel out of the lion's den, and he came out without a scratch. Yeah! No. The king was angry at the others for tricking him, no. so he threw them into the lion's den, and the lions gobbled them up. Ah, oh, you don't see that every day. The king changed the law so the whole kingdom could serve God. For he is the living God, and he endures forever. Wow! That's amazing! Let's learn some Bible. Say after me. Psalm 27.1 The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Psalm 27.1 The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Hooray! Well, kids, I have to run. But remember, God is always there for you. He loves you so much. Have a very good day. Thank you so much, Vista Bear. We love you. Bye, Vista Bear. And bye, Vista Kids. We love you. Come, Lila. Let's go roar at the lions. Vista, yeah. what a beautiful view from a high position. With Christ in the center, there is nothing missing. Yeah, we praise with open arms and we receive your gift. Revelation 4-1, come up here and I will show you what must happen after this. Yeah, I lift my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord.